So let us uh, recall we had started looking at what are called compact subsets of the real line. So compact sets. So a subset A of R n we said is compact if every sequence x n in A has a subsequence convergent in A. So, then we proved uh, one result namely uh, A contained in R n is compact if only if it is closed and bounded. We were looking at uh, another way of describing compactness. So, we define A is a subset of R n a family of sets say u alpha of open subsets of R n is called an open cover. We say it is an open cover if A is contained in the union it covers it in sense. Okay. So, we were proving a, a theorem that if I contained in real line is a closed bounded interval and let us say uh, okay j j alpha is an open cover i then there is alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n belonging to i such that the interval is covered by these finitely many i alpha j j equal to 1 to n. So, what we are saying is that uh, if you take a closed bounded interval in the real line, okay, of course, uh, because it is closed bounded it is a uh, compact set. So, uh, we are saying if uh, i is a compact set which is an interval close bounded interval then every open cover of the close bounded interval i has a finite sub cover that means given any uh, open cover for the interval i there are finitely many of them uh, open sets which are only needed to cover it Right. So, let us uh, prove it and we had almost uh, proved it la last lecture. So, proof the idea was that let us look at the set A of all x belonging to A B such that the interval A to x has a finite sub cover. Right. We are trying to show that the interval i has that property. Okay. Uh, we have not said what is i, so let us probably let i is a closed bounded interval, so let us say it is a b. Okay. 
I is the interval which is closed bounded. So, let it be the closed bounded interval a b. Then look at all the points x in a b such that the interval a to x has a finite sub cover. Right? The idea is to show that a to b has a finite sub cover. Right? So, let us look at uh, note we proved last time that the set A is not empty, because the point A belongs to A. A is bounded, because it is inside the closed interval, it is a subset of A B. So, implies by the L U B property that alpha equal to least upper bound of A exists. So, least upper bound of the set A exists. So, we observe that because the set A is inside A B, alpha is between A and B. It is a set between alpha is a number which is the least upper bound of A and A is a subset of A B. So, least upper bound has to be part of the interval A to B. Okay. We claim first that the interval A to alpha has a finite sub cover, and uh, the second part would be that alpha is equal to B. So, these two claims will prove right that the interval A to B has got a finite sub cover. So, let us check both of them one by one. So, this is the idea of the proof. So, let us check here is A and here is B and somewhere we have got alpha in between. We do not know alpha is equal to B or not, but at least alpha is less than or equal to B. Okay. So, first of all let us observe that since alpha belongs to A B and A B is covered by there is a covering given. So, A B is covered in uh, union of uh, J alpha, alpha belonging to I. So, what does it imply? So, this implies oh, oh, just a minute, I think I am using same alpha here and same alpha there. So, let us change it one of them, probably this indexing set let me call it as J lambda. So, J does not matter what you call it, but not so that no confusion comes. So, lambda, right? The open cover is J lambda. I have just renamed it, does not matter. Is it okay? No problem. Yeah. Now, alpha belongs to A B closed interval and that is covered by J lambda. So, alpha must belong to one of them. So, implies there exists some lambda 0 such that alpha belongs to J lambda 0. right? And J lambda 0 an open set. So, what does it imply? What is the definition of open set? Every point is an interior point. So, there must be a open ball around the point x which is inside that open set. But we are in real line. So, there is open interval around the point alpha which is inside J lambda 0. So, implies, so there is let us call it say something epsilon bigger than 0 such that uh, point is alpha. So, alpha minus epsilon alpha plus epsilon is a subset of alpha belongs to it and that is a subset of J lambda 0 right because of openness. We are slowly com coming to intervals. So, let me draw the picture what is happening. So, here is A, here is B, and here is alpha. So, there is some J lambda naught. So, there is a open interval alpha minus. So, let us say this is alpha minus epsilon, and this is alpha plus epsilon. So, that this interval. Okay, is inside. So, this is this interval that is inside J lambda naught. 
okay good now this alpha is least upper bound right so alpha minus epsilon cannot be the least upper bound for the set a is it okay that means what there must be an element of a which is inside alpha minus epsilon and alpha so so let us write since alpha is equal to l u b of a there exists some point let us call it as uh, x belonging to a say that alpha minus epsilon is less than x is less than alpha so here is the point x okay right now look at this interval a to x so this is the interval a to x x belongs to a so this must be covered by finitely many elements of that covering by the definition of a and alpha itself is inside this interval alpha minus epsilon to alpha plus epsilon which is contained in one element j lambda not so claim is that note so this is a crucial thing to note that a to alpha is equal to a to x union x to alpha which is contained in a to x x belongs to a so it is covered by finitely many right and alpha x to alpha is inside alpha minus epsilon to alpha plus epsilon which is inside j lambda not so this is uh, has a okay implies a to alpha has a finite sub cover because a to x has a finite sub cover by definition of x in a and the interval x to alpha is covered by one of those the j alpha not that we have selected right so put together it is a finite sub cover of a to alpha so that implies alpha belongs to a right that means a to alpha has a finite sub cover that is what we wanted that is equivalent so this proves this proves claim 1 so what was claim 1 we wanted to show that a to alpha has a finite sub cover the claim alpha has to be equal to b right that will complete the proof so let us see how does it happen so next if alpha is less than b if alpha is less than b then what does our earlier construction give us this is a and this is b and here is alpha actually the picture drawn earlier was saying that it is less than b but anyway if alpha is less than b we had that there is uh, alpha minus epsilon alpha plus epsilon right and uh, this is contained in okay if as before a less than alpha minus epsilon less than alpha less than alpha plus epsilon less than we can choose less than b right that earlier picture i am continuing we know a to alpha is covered by finitely many but alpha to alpha plus epsilon right there must be some element in it right so let us choose anything that you like so let us choose some let us choose a beta so here so choose so this is so choose any beta belonging to oh okay any beta belonging to alpha to alpha plus epsilon less than b uh, alpha plus epsilon okay anyway that is less than b that we have already so that is a crucial thing choose any point beta where does beta belong beta belongs to alpha minus epsilon to 
alpha plus epsilon and that is contained in G alpha naught, right? Alpha minus epsilon to alpha because the point alpha was inside an open interval, uh, open set G alpha naught. So, there must be an open interval that is how we had constructed it. And now, we are saying on the right side of alpha, pick up any point beta, right? Now, A to alpha is covered by finitely many and alpha to beta is inside this open interval which is inside J alpha naught. So, what does it say? That A to beta is also covered by finitely many. Is that okay? So, implies A to beta has a finite sub cover. Is that okay for everybody? Because A to alpha we have already shown as a finite sub cover and beta belongs to this interval alpha minus epsilon to alpha plus epsilon. Okay? So, it belongs to this and that is inside J alpha naught. So, that so if I put together these so this one element J alpha naught in the covering and covering of A to alpha, then I get a new covering which is finite for A to beta. But what does it imply? Implies beta bigger than alpha and beta belongs to A. A to beta has a cover, finite sub cover and beta is strictly bigger. But what is alpha? It is the least upper bound of A. So, there is nothing of the set can be bigger than alpha. So, that is a contradiction. This is not possible. So, what is our assumption? As our assumption was that alpha is less than b that is giving us a contradiction. We are able to find an element beta because alpha and b there is a distance right there is some points. If alpha is equal to b I cannot find beta right that is what precisely we wanted to say. So, implies alpha is equal to b. So, hence A to B is a finite sub cover. Okay. So, essentially the idea is quite simple start with A, the singleton A has a finite sub cover, go on stretching it and seeing how much you can stretch so that A to X has a finite sub cover, right, and try to show that stretching goes up to b by taking the set a <coughs> least upper bound and showing it is equal to. So, we have got uh, an alternate way of describing close bounded intervals. The close bounded intervals have that property given any open cover there is a finite sub cover and we said this goes by a name this goes by the name called Heine Borel theorem for intervals. One can actually extend it slightly further. So, let us uh, do that. Okay. See here we have to shown is every close bounded interval has this property. Right? We want to show every compact set has got that property. Close bounded intervals are compact. Right? by definition or by the property that a set is compact if and only if it is closed and bounded. But there are closed bounded sets which are not intervals obviously. right? So, for example, you can look at sets which are uh, the union of two closed bounded intervals. So, look at the set A uh, which is equal to say 0 to 1 union Okay, 3 to 4. A is not an interval, it is not an interval, right? But A is, is it a closed set? Yes, it is a closed set because we have shown that finite union of closed sets is a closed set. Right? So, this is a closed set 
and it is bounded it is bounded between 0 and 4. So, it is a closed bounded set is a closed bounded set and hence is compact. It is not an interval, but it is a compact set. So, compact subsets even of real line need not be intervals, close bounded intervals. Okay. But what we want to show is it has uh, those properties, the Heine Borel property you can call it. So, let us write this as a theorem.